So today we're going to be looking at the loop of Henle, which is responsible for water reabsorption. And its main job is to maintain a concentration gradient of sodium ions in the medulla. So on here we've got the loop of Henle. At the top we've got the proximal convoluted tubule. We've got the distal convoluted tubule here. And we have got the collecting duct here. So I've separated it in two areas. We've got the cortex at the top, which is where the two convoluted tubules are. And then you see that the loop of Henle is in the medulla. So up here, this is the proximal convoluted tubule. We've got here, we've got the distal convoluted tubule. And here we have got the collecting duct. The important things to know are we have got two parts of the loop of Henle. So this side is the descending limb. And the filtrate moves down the descending limb. So it will move downwards. And the important things to note about the descending limb is it is narrow. It has thin walls. And most importantly, it is permeable to water. So water is able to pass through the walls of the descending limb. On the other side, we have the ascending limb. Now, on the ascending limb, it is wider. It has thicker walls. And it is impermeable to water. So that means that any water in the filtrate is unable to move out of the ascending limb through the walls. Now, surrounding the descending and ascending limbs in this space is interstitial fluid um, or interstitial space. Now, in this space, there are lots of capillaries where water can be reabsorbed. So if it moves out of the loop of Henle through the descending limb and it moves into the interstitial space, it can be reabsorbed into your bloodstream via those capillaries. So all around here, we have this interstitial space. So that's surrounding the loop of Henle. So we've got the descending limb and filtrate will move down the descending limb and then we've got the ascending limb where the filtrate will move upwards towards the distal convoluted tubule. So the first thing that happens then is in the ascending limb sodium ions are transported out of the ascending limb so sodium ion is moving out of the ascending limb by active transport. So it's moving against its concentration gradient from the ascending limb into the interstitial space. So remember, in the ascending limb, water can't leave, but ions can leave. So sodium ions are moving out into the interstitial space by active transport. Now that we've had sodium ions moving out of the ascending limb into the interstitial space by active transport, we have now got sodium ions in this interstitial space. Now, if we've got sodium ions moving into the interstitial space, that is going to lower the water potential of the interstitial space. So this area now surrounding the loop of Henle in this interstitial space has now got a lower water potential. So if there's now a lower water potential in the interstitial space. The descending limb, which has got water, and remember it's permeable, so water can move out of the descending limb. Water in this filtrate, in the descending limb, is going to move by osmosis from this area of high water potential to this area of lower water potential because the water potential has been lowered by the sodium ions. So water 
is able to move out of the descending limb by osmosis. So as the filtrate is traveling down this descending limb, water is moving out by osmosis. So as we travel down the descending limb, water is moving out by osmosis, so more water is moving out. So the water potential inside the descending limb is getting lower as we move down. So as we move down the descending limb, the water potential inside is decreasing. Okay, so we're getting a smaller volume of filtrate as we are moving down the descending limb because water is moving out by osmosis. So the further we move down in the medulla, the lower the water potential is going to be inside the loop of Henle. Now, these numbers in the loop of Henle represent the concentration of the filtrate. So the concentration of the solutes or ions inside the filtrate. So as you can see, as we are moving down the descending limb, we are getting an increase in number because, as we said, water is moving out of the descending limb by osmosis. So that concentration of ions inside the descending limb is increasing. OK, and remember, water is moving out of the descending limb because the sodium ions are being actively transported out of the ascending limb, which has decreased the water potential inside the interstitial space. And water moves from an area of higher water potential to an area of lower water potential. The next thing that happens then, so as we've said, we've got the lowest water potential or the highest concentration of solutes at the bottom of the loop of Henle. As the filtrate now moves into the ascending limb, remember the ascending limb is impermeable to water. So water can no longer leave the loop of Henle once it's in the ascending limb. So what happens is the sodium ions will now move out of the lower portion of the ascending limb by diffusion. Okay, so we're now getting the movement of sodium ions from the um, ascending limb into the interstitial space. Because remember, the water has moved out by osmosis in the descending limb. So now we've got a higher concentration of sodium ions in the filtrate than the interstitial space. So as we have now got the filtrate moving up the ascending limb, sodium ions are moving out. And as you can see by the numbers, the um, concentration of solutes or ions inside the filtrate has become lower. However, even though it's become lower, we still have sodium ions leaving the ascending limb because at the top we have active transport. So we're back to where we started. We've got that active transport of sodium ions into the interstitial space, which is lowering that water potential and we're starting the cycle again. Okay, so at the bottom of the ascending limb, we have sodium ions moving out into the interstitial space by diffusion. And as the filtrate is now moving upwards, we also have active transport. So as we are moving up the ascending limb, the water potential of the filtrate is now increasing. OK, because we're not losing any water, we are now losing the ions. So the water potential has now increased. And then the filtrate will move into the distal convoluted tubule where water will be reabsorbed and it will move into the collecting ducts where the majority of the water will be reabsorbed. 
If it's not reabsorbed, it will carry on through the collecting duct where it will be transported to the bladder. So if we go through it one more time and we'll number it, okay? So the first thing that happens is we have that active transport of sodium ions from the ascending limb into the interstitial space. As that happens, that lowers the water potential of the interstitial space. That then causes water in the descending limb to move from the descending limb into the interstitial space by osmosis because we've got a higher water potential of water in the filtrate than the interstitial space. So water moves from high to low water potential. As we're moving down the descending limb, water is moving out by osmosis. So we are decreasing the water potential inside the descending limb. But the numbers are increasing here because that is the concentration of ions inside the filtrate. We have the lowest water potential at the bottom of the um, loop of Henle. So the deeper it, into the medulla we go, the lower the water potential. And then as we go into the ascending limb, what happens is we have sodium ions moving out into the interstitial space by diffusion. And as we move up the ascending limb, we are having sodium moving out by diffusion. So we're losing sodium ions. So the water potential inside the ascending limb, as we go up the ascending limb, we are getting water potential is increasing. And that filtrate will move into the distal convoluted tubule and then into the collecting duct. You may need to watch this a couple of times because it is tricky. But if you have any questions, do ask.